Hi everyone, Stacy here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. So today let's talk about Mars retrograde and which areas of life may be impacted by this for each and every sign. Now, before I dive into all 12 signs, I just want to take a quick opportunity and thank each and every one of you for liking, sharing my content and subscribing to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for finding your way to me. And I'm very grateful that you found your way to me. So thank you so much for the support. And again, I'm sending the love back to you tenfold. So thank you so much for that. Also keep in mind, these are general, general readings. I do not have your personal birth chart sitting in front of me. So as always take what resonates and leave the rest. I do use whole sign house systems for or the whole sign house system, I should say, for all of my uh, videos on my YouTube channel. I also utilize Western tropical astrology. So again, this may or may not resonate with each and every one of you, depending on what astrology system that you personally prefer. Also, I do recommend to watch for your rising sign, your sun sign, and any other planet placement point that you resonate with to pull all the information together to sort of give you a high level holistic overview of what this Mars, Mars retrograde could bring to you personally. And of course, if you'd like a personal reading to you, for you, all about you, you can get in touch with me on my website and I'll be sure to put the link to that in the description box below. Okay, so just some uh, tidbits about Mars and who Mars is exactly. So he takes approximately two years to go through all 12 zodiac signs. So he spends approximately six to seven weeks in each and every sign. And Mars does go retrograde approximately every two years or so. So for example, the most recent Mars retrograde that we experienced was October of 2022 until January of 2023 and that was in the sign of Gemini so if you want to think back to those time that time period and see what happened in your life you can certainly do so to kind of give give you a flavor of what a Mars retrograde is all about but keep in mind not the exact same things are going to be happening because we'll be talking about the signs of Cancer and Leo here in a second now Mars is all about our actions, our motivations, our passions, our drive. Mars also rules our uh, sexual drive and sexuality as well. So Mars is how we chase after and get what we want or try to get what we want. It's where we direct our power, our passions, our energies. Mars just wants to move forward. He does not want to stop. He does not want to look around. He does not want to pump the brakes. It's all about just moving that energy forward. He is um, the god of war after all. So think about that as he just wants to go, go, go that forward momentum. And he's only got one thing on his mind and he's very, very, very determined and passionate about what he does. So therefore he does not like to be in retrograde motion because when he's in retrograde, this does force him, therefore us, in at least one or more areas of life, it forces us to slow down and to take stock of where we are at. And we are being asked to, or perhaps even forced to have patience and to sort of pull back our ego and our frustrations and our anger and to sort of deal with our past actions or past behaviors or past speech. Again, depending on where your natal Mars is and depending on where this is hitting your chart personally, which I'll get into in just a second here. So unfortunately, Mars is kind of double whammy with this retrograde because first of all, he obviously does not like to be in retrograde motion, but secondly, he's at his fall in cancer so he really does not know how to express himself in cancer um or i should say he really struggles like he has to try extra 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 hard to be in this sign but sometimes it can come out sideways the actions can come out not as intended so the dates that i have at the top left hand side of the screen in red that is the entire Mars retrograde period. So October the 5th of 2024 was when 
Mars officially went into shadow, 17 degrees of Cancer. He will be stationing retrograde officially on December the 6th at six degrees of Leo. And then he will back all the way back into Cancer at 17 degrees. And that's where he's going to station direct on February the 23rd. And again, you guys give or take a day or two, depending on where you are on the planet, whenever I'm throwing out dates. And then he will officially come out of retrograde shadow on the 2nd of May at six degrees of Leo. So you can see how extensive this period of time is. And I also wanted to share, um, I'm a bit of a, a, you know, I wanted to geek out on some of the dates because I love looking back in time to kind of give us a flavor of what similar energies could be coming up at this time. So I hope, I hope this does not confuse you. For those of you that like dates, great. For those of you that don't or don't care, just bear with me here for a couple more minutes. So the last time we had Mars retrograde in Cancer and or Leo was December of 2009 to March of 2010. So think back to that time. That's when Mars was retrograde in Leo. It might give some similar themes it won't be exact, but similar three themes as to what may be coming down the pipe for you over this six month period. Now, before that, November of 92 to February of 93, we had Mars retrograde in Cancer. So similar thing. Think back to this time in your life, depending on your age, of course, maybe some of you were under the influence of our parents, depending on, again, if we were a, a youngster or not. Um, but anyway, it might have some similarities to what could be coming up during this retrograde in Cancer, because the bulk of the retrograde will be in the sign of Cancer. Now, just to give you a flavor of how rare this is, yes, Mars goes retrograde every two years, but in different signs, of course. The next Mars retrograde cycles we will experience in our lifetime for Cancer and Leo um, sorry, in the signs of Cancer and Leo is November 2039 to March of 2042. So just to, again, give you kind of an idea of how rare this is when they do retrograde in respective signs. Another thing we're going to talk about is your Aries placements or your Aries houses and Scorpio house because Mars also rules these houses as well. So these two areas of life will also be activated so technically mars is going to be activating four areas of life so that's leo cancer scorpio and aries now if you're not any one of those signs it doesn't matter this still is going to impact you because we all have aries and scorpio and leo and cancer somewhere in our natal birth chart also we have our natal mars somewhere in our birth chart as well so you can also keep that in mind if you do know where your mars is in your natal birth chart and if you don't that is totally fine at least some of the information i provide today hopefully will resonate with you one thing i want to throw out right now is because this is happening in the sign of cancer and leo for all of us i think our home life something to do with our home family foundation whatever that means to you security people that you live with, so whether this is your uh, parents, whether this is uh, flatmates, roommates, uh, love partnerships, friends, whatever the case may be, I think all of this will be impacted. Also, kids, if you do have kids, your living circumstances, your home life, um, also because of Leo is also involved here, creative outlets and projects and hobbies will also be impacted by this retrograde great as well along with of course romance and dating and sexuality and pleasure and just having a good time is also going to be up for some introspection for each and every one of us because again cancer and leo sort of rule those areas of life now just a couple things to keep in mind during the mars retrograde these are not hard and fast rules you guys these are just some things that i personally thought of um, reflecting on the two signs, reflecting on the two energies, and also thinking back to previous retrogrades that we have had as well. So anything that starts with a re, an R and an E, are really good things to think about or tackle during this Mars retrograde. So really great time to 
reassess or revisit or renovate the home, <laughs> your home, your living circumstances, your living situation that I mentioned before. So if you are living in a home right now where, you know, half of your house is done, for example, and there's a lot more work to get done on the home, this is such a good time to pick that back up and finish it because you will have, again, the action, the motivation, the passion, the drive to clean up past stuff that you had on the go. Also anything around the house, you know, building a tree fort in the back for the kids, um, you know, getting that siding up, getting that deck painted, um, cleaning out the garage or fixing up the garage or, or whatever the case may be, anything to do with properties is a really good time to tackle those projects during Mars retrograde. But I do want to throw it out there. If you start something in the home, like brand new, like a brand new renovation or a brand new home project, or say you start building a brand new home during Mars retrograde, just be prepared for delays. Um, that's pretty common with any sort of personal planet retrograde, whether it's Mercury, Venus, or Mars, it's pretty common. So, uh, just be prepared for, you know, contractor delays, delays with your time. Maybe you don't have time to tackle each and every project. Um, so anything new might be met with some challenges, but anything old, anything that you can go back to and clean up, that is really a good time to tackle during this retrograde. Also give yourself permission to take care of your physical vessel, your physical body, really nice time to take care of yourself, slow down, sleep in, take that PTO day, take some vacation days. Again, really nice time to stay at home, staycation. Um, as long as you don't get on each other's nerves. Okay. So maybe, uh, you know, with that said, maybe you'll have to, um, some of you will take some vacation out of the home and some of you will stay at home, of course, depending on your personal living situation. And as every retrograde, also this applies to stay open for the last minute schedule changes or miracles to find you because with Mars retrograde, opportunities from the past could be coming back around, especially if Mars rules one of your big angles. So for example, if Mars rules your 10th house, there could be opportunities coming back around from old bosses, old jobs, old business partnerships, whatever the case may be. And really nice time also to kick unhealthy habits. But with that said, sometimes Mars retrograde, we can actually pick up bad habits too. So it could go both ways because Mars is a double-edged sword. So it can always go both ways with Mars retrograde, but a really nice time if you want to get rid of a habit, now is the time to do your best to do so. And also because this is happening in the sign of cancer, a water sign, a very psychic sign, really nice time to talk to a therapist, a counselor, someone that you trust. Um, I'll get into the things to watch out for because you'll, you'll know in a second why you might need to lean on somebody for that emotional support. Now, again, just some things to be mindful of. This is not an extensive end all be all list, just some things I want you to keep in mind. And again, take what resonates, leave the rest. Mars and cancer is very famous for taking your crap out on people that you live with, like in your home, in your vicinity. So whether you live with your kids or your parents or a love partnership or a business partnership or um, friends, family, it, it doesn't matter. Whoever you live with, this could even bleed into the workplace. Think about it this way. A lot of us spend most of our time at work. So this also is going to apply to the workplace as well and taking our stuff out on other people um, like word vomit is coming to mind and hurting other people's feelings and projecting all of the anger and frustration onto other people that we care about. So just something to keep in, keep in mind. Is this going to apply to everyone? No. Again, it just depends on, it also depends on where your Mars is and how you express yourself as well. Our actions and our motivations are going to be powered by emotions, like period, during Mars in Cancer. So again, just something to be mindful of. Um, if you're hot under the collar and you need to take a beat, take a beat. 
Um, don't respond to that email in haste. I do recommend to kind of like give it several hours or if you can sleep on it. <laughs> I know some of you can't, but just even get somebody to review the email before you hit that send button, for example, especially if it's something to do with work or again, a loved one, if you're, if you're upset and, and frustrated at a loved one as well. Um, you know, emotional outbursts will be, I think, pretty common during this retrograde. Again, it depends on where your Mars is and how you are able to express your anger. But again, I think this will impact all of us because this is in the sign of cancer or this is happening in the sign of cancer. So all of us are going to struggle with these little things, whether it's a big thing or a little thing. Not a good idea to hold on to anger or frustration. Again, try to move it out of your body gently because again, this is cancer. Um, even when it's retrograding in Leo, we can, we, we are prone to overdoing it. So again, watch how you're exercising or um, that's why I recommend talking to a counselor, a healer or a therapist about things like this because it's more of a gentle way to, to express it or go for a walk or go for a run, but again, don't hurt yourself. Don't strain yourself to really get this out of you. But again, it depends on your style, okay? Yeah, it will be challenging to fully express ourselves. I think we're all gonna be going through that. And then I added a couple tidbits with Mars retrograde through Leo, because this is the sign of Hollywood. This is the sign of drama and theater. So we could be creating mountains out of molehills. And one thing I forgot to mention is this could be us or this could be other people projecting this onto you. You know, passive aggressive behaviors are pretty common during Mars retrograde in cancer or Mars in cancer period. Um, you might not even notice you're doing it, but you might notice others doing it to you. So this isn't always about us, but it's about other people as well. And just kind of notice what you're noticing and notice other people's behaviors, just having your antenna up a little bit higher, so to speak. So yeah, there could be some love drama on the horizon because again, Mars is a personal planet. Mars is part of our relationships. Mars rules our sexual drive or sexual energy. So I threw it in here. You know, usually when Venus or Mars goes retrograde and we break up with someone or someone breaks up with us, sometimes it doesn't last forever. But the difference between Venus retrograde and Mars retrograde is that Mars cuts and severs for a reason. So you might be on and off, on and off with someone. For example, I'm just using this as an example. This definitely is not going to apply to all of you. But if you're off and on, off and on, off and on with someone, say from September of 2024 until May of 2025, that might be someone's breaking point, right? Where either you are severing that relationship or that other person is severing the relationship. Now, this could be in any relationship, right? This could be in love, business, work, friendships, or even relatives as well. So, or distancing yourself from these people. Um, it might not be a clean cut sever, um, but you'll be distancing, you'll be treating that relationship a little bit differently. So there is a purpose, there is a reason sometimes when we distance ourselves from individuals and then once Mars comes out of shadow, if there's any confusion over the next six months or so, in May, June timeframe, I feel like you'll have a little bit more clarity. But I will dive into all 12 signs and talk about, especially for those of you where this will impact your relationships greatly. But this does apply to all of us. Because again, it's a personal planet um, and Mars is part of our relationships as well. Mars is also how we relate to, a, especially a love uh, relationship as well. Okay. So that's about it that I was going to natter on about Mars. So again, watch for your sun sign, your rising sign, or any other planet placement point that resonates with you. And we'll dive into all 12 signs. Hey, Aries, let's talk about this Mars retrograde for you. Now, keep in mind, this is your ruling planet so you are always going to be impacted by mars retrogrades not that that's a bad thing again as i mentioned in the earlier slides hopefully you watched the beginning of my video of some tidbits on what to take advantage of during this mars retrograde because again retrogrades are not bad 
bad things, horrible things. It's just how we utilize that energy. So Aries, yeah, for you, definitely give yourself permission to slow down and take it easy if you can during this retrograde season. Okay, so Mars will be activating your fourth house, your fifth house, your first house, and your eighth house. So first, let's start with talking about your fourth house, your fifth house, because that's technically where this retrograde motion back and forth, back and forth is going to be happening for you. So your fourth house is definitely up for some review, revision, and possible conflict something in the home life might need to end sever, like I mentioned earlier on in the video. Um, or if that doesn't resonate with you, this is just changes on the home front, whatever that means for you. So this is family, this is loved ones, this is your kids, this is mom, dad, authority figures in your life. This could also be maybe something to do with grandparents. You as a parent as well could also be, also be up for some changes. Um, and again, challenges, because that's what Mars is. Mars is a double-edged sword. Um, he does rev us up from the inside out, but there's always a reason for that. And I mean, I feel like I shouldn't even, I guess I don't need to explain that to you, Aries, because this is your <laughs> ruling planet. So do keep in mind, Mars will be squaring you um, January to April of 2025. So this could be challenging if you do have anything between 17 and 29 degrees of Aries. If you don't know your chart, don't worry about it. You'll feel this regardless. Now, all this is going to make you do is, again, take some action in that fourth house area of life. Now, once Mars moves into Leo, he actually will be trining. He'll be making really nice aspects to your Aries placements, planets, points, whatever you're watching for. Zero to six degrees of Aries, if you have anything around that, those degree points, Mars is going to be infusing and blessing your energy um, and even bringing in some, dare I say, some harmony <laughs> in this area of life. Aries. It's when Mars goes retrograde is when that can wreck a little bit of um, havoc. But regardless, though, this is still making a nice aspect to your planet's placement points, as I mentioned, the beginning degrees of your sign. Now, the fifth house is also about children. If you do have children or creative projects, hobbies, entrepreneurship, um, this is, again, the house that lights you up from the inside out. This is where our passions lie. Also, this is the house of romance and dating. So um, Aries, depending on your relationship status, whether you're in a relationship or not. Uh, well, if you are in a relationship, it could bring some challenges in the romance sector, the spark, for example. Um, don't be surprised if your sex drive goes down. Don't let that alarm you or scare you. Um, but obviously, I'm not a doctor. If you want to pursue from a medical angle, you do you. Uh, but naturally, our sex drive takes kind of a back seat when Mars is retrograde. So just don't let that alarm you or scare you. And that's going to be for you and your partner as well. Uh, let's see here. And because this is your planet, this is also going to impact your first house. So this might be changes that you make with your physical appearance, for example, like exercise, health routine, um, how you take care of your physical appearance physical body. Um, this is also the health of your body. So maybe speaking of doctors or medical practitioners, what do you need to do to get your body back in shape? Whether it's seeing a naturopathic doctor, a, a regular, uh, what do they call them? General practitioners, GPs or something like that, or more holistic like acupuncture or massage therapy. Like what can you do to take care of your body? This is also the house that rules major life themes because anything to do with the first house might ripple out to all areas of life as well. So some of that could be going through some change, Aries, and also your financial house is impacted as well. So this could also impact your partner's finances because the eighth house is also about other people's resources, other people that you're in a relationship with, whether this is business, love, friends, family, anyone that you share resources with. There, again, could be some changes or, again, severing, ending, um, maybe selling something, and then you both take your shares, something along those lines. That could also be 
coming up for some introspection. So the, I'm not saying all these things are going to happen, Aries. I just wanted to kind of give you some examples because this technically will impact um, multiple areas of life. But the core energy is definitely going to be in your fourth house and that fifth house of creativity, children, self-expression. Um, again, good time to pick up an old hobby. If you put down something old, pick it back up. Um, and you'd be surprised where you can take it or incorporate it somehow into your business, into your career, into your work, into your side hustle. Uh, whether you're working or not, it doesn't matter. Pick up something old around the house and make it like new again, for example. All right, Aries, so enjoy your uh, Mars retrograde season and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey Taurus, let's talk about Mars and the houses that he will be activating you for the next several months here. So he will be activating your third house, your fourth house, your seventh house and your 12th house. So I know that's a lot to take in, but let's start with your third house, your fourth house, because I think that's where the core energies are going to be. So third house is all about siblings and cousins and neighbors and extended family members. This is also the community that you associate with or that you belong to. Um, this is also the house of writing and teaching, any sort of educational pursuits or upgrading. This is also the house of transportation, technology, um, how you get around, more so short distance traveling in this area of life. It could bleed into long distance traveling, but we'll keep it to short distance traveling for now, if that resonates with you. Um, so this area of life is up for some changes, some introspection, maybe even severing and ending. I'm just gonna throw it out there. This is not gonna apply for everyone. So apply this to your life. But again, Mars is in here for a reason going back and forth to help you possibly get rid of something that's not really working so you can move into something brand new um, come May 2025. Now, the nice thing with Mars in Cancer is that he'll be making opportunity aspects up to your first house, whatever you're watching for right now. So again, opportunities coming back around from the past of the things that I just mentioned, anything to do with the mind, communication, transportation, siblings, cousins, neighbors, relatives, educational pursuits, upgrading, things like that. Opportunities from the past could be coming back around for you. Now, Mars will dip into the first degrees of Leo, just a very short stint, but this will be on your home life. So focus in on home, family, foundation, security, children it's whoever you live with this could also be about roots and ancestry and place of living like where you came from um, this could be also about mom dad authority figures in your life and maybe even you as a parent could be up for some changes and also challenges as well because leo does square your planet's placements points taurus so if you have anything at the beginning degrees of taurus mars will be challenging you to take some action in this area of life nothing to be scared of it's not doom and gloom um we have squares from mars all the time it's whether we're conscious of it or not but mars is just asking you to again sever and change something in these areas of life that is not working now, some other things that could be incorporated because Mars rules your seventh house and 12th house. So the 12th house is more of a hidden house. This is about preparing for a new cycle. This is about endings and cutting away things that do not work for you anymore, do not support you, do not let light you up. So this is about emphasizing letting something go, Taurus, in at least one area of life. This is also introspection of where is your time your energy your effort your money being spent where is all that going and are you taking care of yourself again give yourself permission to take a break this retrograde season whether it's just a day off two days off getting away for a little bit whatever the case may be take care of your physical body as well taurus this could also be about um awakenings, spirituality, spiritual growth, if that resonates with you. This is also about solitude. So if you crave that solitude, that's this Mars 
activating that area of life for you. And this is also about, um, could be about, I should say, your hidden gifts, talents, and abilities. So some of those could be bubbling up to the surface now as well for a reason. Just remember, things are coming up for a reason to be acknowledged, possibly to be healed as well, Taurus. And then last but not least, your seventh house might also be activated here. So this is all about relationships, which I was mentioning here uh, earlier in the videos. Um, love relationships, business partnerships, friendships, family, all walks of life. It's how you relate one on one to someone, Taurus. So again, that might be up for some introspection. Now, don't panic. I'm not saying you're going to end a friendship. You're going to end a job. You're going to end a love or marriage whatever the case may be this is only if it resonates with you mars is going back and forth here for a reason it's bringing these issues up to the surface for a reason to be dealt with once and for all because again mars is a blessing at times because mars helps us cut and sever and end and let something go that is just not working for us anymore so Taurus, enjoy the Mars retrograde season, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Gemini, let's talk about where Mars retrograde will be assisting you over the next few months here. So he's activating four areas of life for you in particular. So your second house, your third house, your 11th house and also your sixth house so i know those are a lot of areas of life so i'm going to give you some examples some possibilities that could be coming up for you over the next several months now mars in the second house i'm going to throw it out there you're going to spend a lot of money or you're going to want to spend a lot of money that is such a common theme with mars in the second house whether it's natally or transiting um again if you have the means to do so give her <laughs> but if you don't, just something to uh, just something to keep in mind. Now, Mars in the second house. This is also about um, not only money and resources and assets, but this could be about your work, what you do for work, how you earn a living or earn income. Uh, so whether you're working or not, how do you pay bills? How do you pay your taxes? How do you pay for the vehicle, the gas to drive around in, or whatever the case may be? Um, this house. This area of life also represents material possessions or material assets. Also your skill set, your skills, your talents, your abilities. One thing with Mars in here too could help you cut and sever and sell and get rid of things that you don't need anymore, for example. Now, Mars will go into Leo for a short stint, zero to six degrees. The cool thing is, if you have anything around zero to six degrees of Gemini, this will actually be bringing you in opportunities, possibly opportunities from the past, maybe. Uh, I'm not saying this is going to happen for each and every one of you, but only if this applies to you, depending on what you're watching for. But Mars in the third house is going to activate um, siblings, cousins, neighbors, neighborhood, community, whatever community means to you, for you. This is about educational pursuits, the mind, information overload. So this is anything to do with technology, internet, emails, text messages, how you communicate. This is the lower mind. This is transportation or however it is that you get around. And this is also short distance tripping around or traveling. This could also be for you, Gemini, something to do with publishing, writing, or reading as well, or mentoring, coaching, if, if you do that as part of your business. So some of those things are up for some change or some revision, or again, cutting and severing away something that no longer fits in your life, so you can welcome in something new. Now, the other areas of life that could be up for some change i'm not saying it's going to happen exactly but mars rules your 11th house and sixth house so the 11th house is friendship circles so this is all about people that you hang out with people that you surround yourself with by choice and also your role in these groups as well so that could be also up for some change the 11th house is also about our long-term goals and commitments so there could be some 
long-term future goals or plans that might come up for reassessment or review or tweaking in some way, shape or form. Now, the sixth house is all about work. It's a very heavy, heavy house. So anything to do with work, work colleagues, work environment, whether you own a business, run a business or work for an employer, there could be changes on the work front at this time. Especially if you're a business owner, there might be some changes for the, um, with regards to employees perhaps that work with you or for you, there could be changes. Also, this is about diet, health and nutrition. Something about how you are taking care of your body could come up at this time as well. And this is also the house of pets. So perhaps um, something comes up regarding a pet and you have to address that, whatever, whatever the case may be. So Gemini, all in all, I wish you a wonderful Mars retrograde season ahead and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Cancer, let's talk about where this Mars retrograde will be possibly impacting areas of life for you. So as you probably know by now, this is happening in your sign. I've said it enough at the beginning of the video that this is happening in Cancer and Leo. So your first house, your second house is up for some review and revision. And also Mars rules your fifth house and your 10th house as well, Cancer. So what does that mean? Well, we'll start with your first house. So this is all about you. This is all about your identity. This could be about your style, how you dress, how you carry yourself, how you um, present yourself to the world. What, what are you known for? The first house can really impact all areas of life. The first house is also the physical body. So Cancer, how are you taking care of yourself? Um, is there anything you need to do or maybe incorporate into your day to day that will help take care of your physical body, your physical vessel? Um, also, if you want to make changes to your identity, this is not a bad time to do it as well. Just maybe don't move forward with anything too crazy drastic until after the Mars retrograde. But again, you do you cancer. I mean, we are here to experiment. I mean, hair can be hair can grow out, hair can be recolored, things like that. Um, but also, you know, if you want to get anything permanent, I would just make sure you absolutely want that because again, sometimes permanent things we cannot take away as easily as hair color, for example, or dye or whatever. Also, Cancer, this is going to impact your second house as well. Second house is all about money, how you earn a living, whether you're working or not. This is how, like, how do you pay for the mundane stuff? How do you pay for groceries? How do you pay for um, your taxes? How do you pay for the gas that goes into your vehicle so you can uh, drive around? Things like that. Cancer could be up for some changes or some revisions. Also, this is your house of work. So there could be some reassessments on the work front or changes on the work front. Second house is also about our skill set, our skills, our talents, our abilities, and also um, material possessions, what we own, any sort of property or assets could fall into this house as well. So quite simply, Cancer, you could be cutting away and severing and selling things off that you don't need anymore. That could be quite a um, simple explanation for Mars in your second house. Is that gonna to apply to everyone? No, you apply this to your life, Cancer. Again, take what resonates and leave the rest. Uh, Mars in the second house though, if I already didn't mention it, makes you wanna blow a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it out there. Mars in the second house, you'll you'll just, I don't know, crave to buy things and blow lots of money and, and things like that. So just again, something to be mindful of because Leo is your second house, this could be about blowing money on your home, your family, your decor, but also your kids as well, like giving them a lot of money as well could be a possibility during this Mars retrograde. Again, if you have the means to do so, great, but if you don't, just kind of a gut check there uh, um, on where your finances and resources are going. Now, Mars also rules your 10th house of career and your fifth house of creativity and children and self-expression. So Cancer, for those of you that are working, even for those of you that are not working, you might have old bosses or old jobs come around 
come back around like opportunities that you missed out on or maybe an opportunity that you applied for and you haven't heard back from in months and months and months so this could happen over the next six months or so um i love this for you actually because this could help you find a career that you want or a side hustle or entrepreneurship or again this could be a change of status this could also have something to do with your parenting style um, mom dad authority figures in your life could be going through some changes too there could be if you work for an employer this could be changes at the top of the food chain bosses could be coming or going because again wherever mars goes he cuts and severs he changes he he gives us the motivation to change our lives for example so again not everything is going to be happening cancer that i'm nattering off here it's i'm just trying to um give you some examples of some possibilities that could be coming down the pipe for you over the next six months or so now fifth house for you as i mentioned rules your children your creativity your self-expression any sort of hobbies um this is the house of entertainment and gambling and just having a good time cancer so again i already mentioned the kid aspect or the kids or the children aspect that you could be spending some more energy time resources to them or towards them but also romantic things here cancer if you are dating someone um or if you're on and off on and off with someone that might continue um but once mars fully pops out of shadow period you'll have more clarity and again not all of you are going to be severing these relationships i'm just saying for those of you that maybe you're feeling this in your intuition um that could be a possibility because wherever mars goes he cuts and severs and separates for our highest good um so again just something to keep in mind but that's definitely not for everyone if you're in a stable solid relationship i wouldn't worry about it i would not worry about it um if anything you could have past romantic partners also come back around from the past as well cancer so enjoy the mars retrograde season cancer and we'll see you back here in the next video bye for now hey leo let's talk about where our mars is going to be activating you for the next several months so of course your first house will be up for some change and reassessments and reviews along with your 12th house and also Mars rules your ninth house along with your fourth house Leo so let's first start with your first house 12th house energy majority of this transit is going to be in your 12th house Leo so unfortunately yes the lack of sleep will continue unfortunately yes I'm a Leo too and I am experiencing this uh big time but what one thing that Mars in here is asking us to do is to perhaps get into a better sleep regime or routine um, at night or at day, depending on for those of you that work a night shift, for example. Actually, if you do work a night shift job, this will actually be in your benefit to your favor, in your favor to your benefit leo so that is one positive thing but the, but for those of us that work a regular day job um yeah may, maybe try to come up with a new routine to help you sleep at night whether that's a bath or hot tub or sauna or swimming um ag again try to avoid crazy vigorous activity uh, the reason why I say that is because we can actually hurt ourselves physically when Mars is retrograde, especially in a water sign, but really in any sort of Mars retrograde energy, we're prone to more accidents, for example. So just something to keep in mind, Leo. But the 12th house is also an extra emphasis on endings. This is all about preparing for a brand new cycle. So for example, when Mars pops back into your sign, in 2025 so this is about where is your energy your time your energy your efforts your money your love being spent where is all that going or who is that going to so that is also might bubble up to the surface for some introspection and review at this time leo as well 
This is also about awakenings, spirituality, spiritual growth, if that resonates with you. This is also, also about solitude and how important solitude will probably be for you over the next few months and healing and also hidden gifts, talents, and abilities. And again, if you need to talk to someone, Leo, really good time to talk to a healer, a counselor, a therapist, whoever you trust and resonate with, um, really good time to talk to them as well. Now, once Mars, he will do a quick stint in your uh, house for, or in your sign, I should say, for November, December, before he retreats back into Cancer. So your first house is all about your identity, Leo. So there could be something about your physical appearance or your physical style that you want to change up. I would just recommend um, try not to do anything too crazy permanent because you might not like it once Mars goes direct. So just something to keep in mind. So, I mean, if you want to dye your hair, or cut your hair, I mean, as far as I know, hair continues to grow, <laughs> you know, so, and we can always change the color of our hairs, but I'm thinking like, piercings, tattoos, cosmetic surgeries, things like that, Leo, you might want to just double, triple check. I mean, if you are certain and sure, then have at her. But I mean, for those of you that are just kind of dipping your toe in the plastic surgery world, for example, or getting Botox or Juvederm or something like that, just double check it, Leo. I don't want to harp on you about it, but just double, double check it there. Um, so those areas of life could be going through some changes and perhaps some challenges at this time. Again, anything that bubbles up during this time, Leo, is being asked to be acknowledged and healed in some way, shape or form and let go. Ultimately, at the end of the day, Mars cuts and severs wherever he goes, uh, but he does that for a reason. He's, he's, if you think about it, it could be a blessing. You know, because how would we end relationships? How would we cut people, toxic people out of our lives if we did not have that motivation and passion and drive to do so, for example? And by the way, I'm just throwing out examples, Leo. This is not going to apply to each and every one of you, but take what resonates, leave the rest. Mars also rules your ninth house. The ninth house is about religion, law, legal matters, higher education, teaching, mentoring, coaching, long distance traveling ethics, your belief systems. This is also the house of meeting people from all over the globe, all walks of life. Uh, this is about pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. And this is also the house of the gods, Leo. So that area of life might also be up for some changes, some challenges, some introspection at this time as well. And your fourth house, we talked about it at the beginning of the video. So you are one of the signs where perhaps your fourth house might come more so into focus. So this is about mom, dad, authority figures in your life, you as a parent, if you are a parent or your parenting style, this could be about your family, your kids, your living situation, your living circumstances, where you're living, place of living, people that you live with, ancestry, roots, going back to places where you came from or where you're born or going back to places that you've already traveled to could be coming back around during this retrograde as well, Leo. All right. Otherwise, Leo, enjoy the Mars retrograde season and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Virgo, let's talk about this Mars retrograde and see which areas of life are being lit up for you over the next few months. So Mars will be retrograding back through your 11th house and 12th house, but he'll also be activating your third house and your eighth house as well, because those are the houses of life, areas of life where Mars also uh, represents or rules. So Virgo, the nice thing is when Mars is in Cancer, he's actually making opportunity aspects to your Virgo planets, placements, points. So that is beautiful energy. This is opportunities coming back from the past, coming back around and benefiting you in some way, shape or form. But I feel like Virgo, you got to let something go. You got to sever, cut, end something in order to welcome in something new. So I'm going to throw out some examples, some possibilities that you may experience over this retrograde. Let's start with that 11th house. This is all about friendship circles, people that you surround yourself with by choice. This is also your role in those friendship circles and groups as well. 
This is your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your long-term goals and commitments. And this is also the house of um, older siblings as well. Regardless, your, both of your sibling houses are being lit up. So I'm gonna say there could be changes to your relationships with a, sing, a sibling or siblings or um, changes in a sibling's life. This, this could actually impact their lives as well. Or, or telling a bigger story, for example. Now your 12th house is a hidden, more of a hidden quieter house. However, this just puts an extra emphasis Virgo on endings. You, you're really being asked, I feel, to let something go, to sever, cut, end something that is just not working in your life. You know, it's, it's time to reassess where is your love, your energy, your time, your money, your motivations, where is all that going to? Or who is that going to? Is it time to change some things? Or are you okay with the status quo? Um, this is gonna impact everybody quite differently because again, it depends on your personal birth chart. But I feel like if anything bubbles up subconsciously into your conscious mind, that is, there's a reason for that. So the thought, the circumstance, whatever the case may be, is being brought up to be dealt with, acknowledged, healed, and then let go of Virgo. So just keep that in mind if things kind of start coming out of nowhere because your 12th house is very hidden. This is about spirituality. This is about awakenings. This is about dreams. Also, when Mars pops into your 12th house, you might struggle to sleep. So November, December, you might struggle to actually get a good night's sleep. So um, all the Leos are going through this as well. So um, one thing I recommended to them, I'm gonna to recommend to you is getting to get into a sleep habit or a better sleep cycle. So whatever that means for you, taking a hot bath, doing a hot tub, uh, taking a walk, um, doing uh, light yoga, light exercise, turning off the phones, I would just recommend to keep it light because sometimes Mars retrogrades, we can hurt ourselves if we go too hard, too fast. So I'm thinking if you like do a really intense workout, you might hurt yourself. Or if you go for a crazy long run and you're not used to running, you might hurt yourself. So again, take it easy on yourself, but also find ways that will benefit you so you can get a good night's rest and also again as i mentioned at the beginning of the video rest is highlighted here give yourself permission to slow down and take a break virgo take care of that physical body because again if our physical body's not functioning as you well know uh we're no good to anyone especially ourselves so okay so those are the two areas of life that will be impacted now some other themes that might bleed in here is eighth house theme so this is about finances resources more so about shared assets and resources whether you're working or not working how do you earn a living how does money come to you how do you pay for your taxes how do you pay for groceries how do you pay for i don't know that three dollar or eight dollar coffee that you get every day like where is your money coming from but this could also impact your partner's resources there might be some reassessments on the business front the home front, the love front, the friendship front, whatever the case may be, there's reassessments here when it comes to your shared property assets, whatever you have, well, whatever you share with someone, basically. I was gonna say whoever you're in bed with, but I mean, that's not, that's not the case for everyone I can understand. But yeah, and this could quite frankly be about also the day-to-day -day stuff like taxes, debts, loans, things coming back around, bills coming back around, uh, taxes coming back around, um, things that you just got to clean up, Virgo. It shouldn't surprise you, uh, but it might. Again, it depends on your personal birth chart and how this is impacting you personally as well. And then this is also impacting your third house. And the third house is all about siblings, cousins, neighbors, neighborhood, community. What does community mean to you? Where This is like place of living uh by choice by the way um or maybe not by choice maybe it's time to reassess that too if you don't like where you're living or who you're living with that could be this could be a good time to uh reassess that as well um or relook at that this is also the house of transportation 
however it is that you get around. And this is also about short distance traveling. This is also about publishing, reading, writing, connecting with other people, technology, um, the mind. Actually, Virgo, you might, uh, this just popped into my head. You might actually experience this, not all of you, but some of you as similar to a Mercury retrograde because Mars does rule your third house of communication, of the mind, of transportation, of technology, of the internet. So um, yeah, I feel like for some of you, you'll also experience this similar to a Mercury retrograde. Not all of you, but perhaps some of you. Anyway, Virgo, enjoy the Mars retrograde. Hopefully that gave you some um, breadcrumbs or some ideas of what you may experience over the next several months. So enjoy the retrograde period and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey Libra, let's talk about Mars a retrograde and what areas of life he may be impacting for you Libra. So this retrograde will take place in your 10th house and your 11th house. So we'll talk about that and flavors of the second house and flavors of the seventh house may also come in as well. So let's start with your 10th house, 11th house. 10th house of career, Libra. There could definitely be changes on the career front. Um, well, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, for you quite loud and clear, I'm also hearing on the home front for you as well. I mean, this is one of your major angles, so I wouldn't be surprised, Libra, if your home, home family foundation, your kids in some way, shape or form are impacted by this as well. Or this could be about your parents, changes in your parents' lives if they are still with us grandparents, bosses as well. There could be changes at the top of the food chain. Um, this is about your status, your reputation, what you're known for. Even if you're retired, you know, maybe some of you, um, or maybe some of you, you know, Mars cuts and severs. So maybe some of you will be putting in that retirement over the next six months or so. I would not be surprised at all, especially, especially if you're true midheaven goes through Cancer Libra. I would not be shocked at all for some of you going through some of those changes. Um, but yeah, some way, shape or form could be changes on the career front, work front. Uh, also, I'm gonna throw it out there. This is not for everyone. So please don't take this the wrong way, but this is also your house of status and Mars cuts and severs. So this could mean you quitting a job. So you're known for being a lawyer and now you're going in to be a baker um, or vice versa. This could also be about marriage. 10th house is also um, going from single to common law or single to married or married to divorce or married to single. Mars is your relationship planet as well, Libra. So I'm just going to throw it out there. You know, Mars cuts, severs, ends. So for those of you that resonate with this message, it could be time to move away from the relationship. Doesn't have to be today, but perhaps May, June of 2025 is when you'll finally get the nudge to end that relationship or vice versa, okay? This could be other people in your lives as well. So I'm just gonna throw it out there, not trying to scare, not try to doom and doom, doom and gloom, but I mean, yeah, just looking at your chart here, this is impacting all the four big areas of your life Libra so I couldn't help but mention that but again if you're in a good relationship don't worry about it it just means that there's going to be some reassessments and possibly challenges that you both need to overcome in your relationship or maybe bringing the spark back in your relationship uh let's see here Libra okay also this is backing into your 11th house and also, I want to mention, even for those of you that are not working, did I already mention that? Again, this is about changes to your day to day. What is it that you do on a day to day? Do you babysit? Do you walk dogs? Do you landscape? Do you clean houses? Do you, I, I don't know, are you a plumber, a painter, a mechanic on the side? This is changes to whatever you're known for doing. So even if you don't work, this is still going to be an introspection time of what what do I want to do? What do I want to dive into? Even if it's some new hobby or an old project around the home that you pick back up again, Libra. Okay, Mars is going to back into your 11th house of Leo. Now, this is uh, all about friendships. 
all about people that you surround yourself with. This is also about your long-term commitments and goals as well. This is also the house of older siblings. If you do have older siblings, I'm just going to throw that out there as well. Could be changes in their lives as well or changes with your relationship with them or something that's coming up to be acknowledged in some way, shape or form. Quite frankly, Libra, this could be changes in your friendship circles as well, people that you surround yourself with. Again, Mars cuts and severs wherever he goes. So possibly it could be a time to maybe not only sever a job, which I think is the career might be more prominent versus a friendship circle. But I mean, regardless, wherever he goes, you know, Mars helps us to trim the fat, so to speak, of those friendship circles that no longer lift us up and no longer support us. Only if that resonates with you, though. Okay, some other themes that might come up. We already talked about the relationships. This is all walks of life with relationships, Libra. Love, business, coworkers, your friends, your family, all walks of relationships that this could be coming up for some change or introspection. How you relate to this person. Also, second house is being highlighted here too. So this is all about money, earning, income, how you earn a living. Again, whether you're working or not, how do you pay for groceries? How do you pay for your taxes? How do you pay for your rent? How do you pay for the gas in your car to run around in? Um, how do you pay on the, for the clothes on your back? Like things like that. How do you, where does money come from into your bank account? For example, whether that's through an employer or through the government or alimony or something along those lines. That could be up for some change as well. Also, watch out for spending too much money during the Mars retrograde as well. Just something to be mindful of. It's not hitting you directly, but again, Mars rules your second house of money and earnings. This could also be about material possessions and assets. So maybe it's time to get rid of things that no longer suit you no longer fit in your life and it's time to let them go and then you can make some money off those assets so just some things to think about also your skills your talents your abilities so again change of work uh, change of position this could also be about upgrading your skill set or thoughts of upgrading your skill set or how can i earn a living in this industry so i can get out of this industry so to speak or again retirement all right, Libra, enjoy this Mars retrograde, and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Scorpio, let's talk about this Mars retrograde and what areas of life are going to be activated for you. So again, this is your ruling planet, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So you will feel Mars retrogrades greatly, you and Aries as well, because this is your ruler. This is your planet. So uh, this retrograde usually every two years will impact you in some way shape or form a little bit more than other signs but i don't want to say that you and aries get the brunt of everything because you certainly don't especially this retrograde for you scorpio i actually see this beneficial for you because um well all the water signs you know well maybe not cancer <laughs> but you and pisces will benefit from this greatly because of the trine aspect down into your planets placements point so this is harmonious easy energy now mars is not easy but the energy might flow a little bit better than say for some of the other signs experiencing this energy so mars retrograde is starting in your well it's technically starting in your 10th house but let's talk about the ninth house of cancer here so this is all about higher education teaching traveling more so long distance traveling meeting people from all walks of life this is the house of religion spirituality legal matters legal battles this is also the house of pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone this is also the house of the gods so for those of you that uh, dabble in the spiritual world you could get some really amazing cool downloads or reassessments coming out of this area of life so there's some changes that might be coming up for you, Scorpio, in this area of life. Or again, introspection, review, reassessing something in this area of life. Now, Mars retrograde is also going to impact your 10th house of career. So this is all about what you do nine to five on a day to day basis. Or are you retired? So what are you known to do? Do you walk dogs? Do you 
paint houses? Do you um, do laundry? Do you babysit? Do you vacuum houses or clean houses or whatever it is, Scorpio, that you do on a day-to-day -day basis could be up for some changes or some challenges. Um, again, wherever Mars goes, your ruler, he cuts and severs wherever he goes. So he helps us let go of things that are no longer working in our lives so we can welcome in something new. So he's going back and forth over old ground, helping us do this. So Scorpio, this could be about letting go of a job. This could be about putting in your resignation. This could be about retirement, finally. And you're like, you know what, I'm out of here. Especially but when May, June comes along, you're kind of like, I'm, I'm done. I'm moving on to something new and different. Um, this is could also be about your status. Now, what I mean by status is say you're known to being a lawyer and suddenly you wanna become a baker or vice versa. That could be a possibility as well. Um, or going from single to married or going from married to divorce, but that's only a select few of you, okay? Because the 10th house does rule our status. That includes our status, like our marital status as well. But again, Mars is not your seventh house ruler like Libra. That's the message I gave to Libra because Mars is literally their seventh house ruler and this is also impacting their 10th house of status. You, it's just that one area of life. So for you, I feel like the focus is more so going to be on work, coworkers, or if you're a business owner, I think that's where maybe some of the changes will be, but I thought I would throw out the status explanation just in case <laughs> okay also 10th house is mom dad authority figures Scorpio so you as a parent could be up for some changes some challenges or your mom dad authority figures there could be some changes in their lives or challenges in their lives in some way shape or form um, grandparents I'm gonna throw them in there as well as as possibilities but also how you parent as well could be up for some change to Scorpio Okay, and then since this is your ruler, this is about you. This is about your physical appearance, your identity, the body, the health of the body. How are you taking care of the body? Do you need to incorporate something new into your routine to maintain your health? Um, this is your approach to life. Some of that could be going through some change as well. And also your sixth house, which I mentioned, of work, of day-to-day -day habits, routines, also pets. In this area of life so you may have to pay extra attention to a pet if they need health care or attention just uh, be mindful of that as well and this is your health too Scorpio so um, again health is double highlighted here with your first house sixth house being represented here so definitely not a bad time to kick an old health unhealthy habit and incorporate something new that's going to be beneficial for you or at least give it a try and see how that goes also Scorpio anything permanent you want to do to your appearance I would ask maybe that you hold off until Mars goes retrograde but again I'll, I'll let you do you I mean if you want to play around with hair color style wh whatever um, but if you want to do anything permanent like tattoos piercings plastic surgery I know I'm just gonna throw it out there unless you're a hundred percent sure I would recommend waiting until at least Mars is direct again in 2025 or doing it before Mars goes retrograde in December otherwise Scorpio enjoy uh, the Mars retrograde and we'll see you back here in the next video bye for now hey Sagittarius let's talk about where this Mars retrograde could be activating various areas of life for you so your eighth house your ninth house is going to be probably going to be impacted by this along with 12th house matters might come up as well along with fifth house matters Sag so let's break this down Mars retrograde in let's start in your eighth house of cancer so this is all about financial matters for you Sag more so about shared resources or shared property or shared assets that you have with another person whether that's in love marriage business family friends whatever the case may be inheritances that could be coming up for some 
reassessments or some challenges at this time. And if challenges are coming up, Sag, it just means that it's something you got to deal with. It's coming up for a reason. There could be changes actually in your spouse's income or your business partner's income at this time as well, because wherever Mars goes, he cuts and severs. So there might be some sort of cutback or some unexpected bill that either comes in for you, but this is also the house of your partner as well, which it will impact you in some way, shape or form. And I don't mean to doom and gloom this, Sag, so don't take it that way. Uh, the eighth house is the eighth house. That's the mundane stuff we have to deal with. Eighth house is also about taxes, debts, loans as well. So something could be coming back around or up for some reassessment, or again, a bill might show up and you're kind of like, well, where did this come from? You know, why am I getting billed for this now? So things like that could be coming back around at this time. Now, once Mars, um, well, Mars currently is in Leo as I'm recording this video, but once Mars um, stations in your ninth house and goes backwards, he will come back to your ninth house. So ninth house matters are also gonna be up for some review. So this is all about religion, spirituality, higher education, teaching, learning, traveling, mentoring, coaching, you becoming the elder, you passing down your knowledge. This is also the house of the gods. This is the house of pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. This is expanding yourself, Sag. And this is about um, connecting with people all over the globe. So that could be up for some changes as well. Now, the nice thing is when Mars pops into Leo, he'll be trining your Sagittarius placements at zero to six degrees. Anything around those degree points are definitely going to be impacted and will add an additional layer. So for example, if your son is at the beginning degrees of Sag, this will impact your career, for example, or father, father like figures in your life or your boss even, or you as an entrepreneur, if you are a boss or own a business or run a business Sag, just to give you some examples. I'm not saying all these things are going to happen to all of you. I'm just trying to throw out some examples of what to expect during this Mars retrograde. Mars also rules your hidden 12th house of spirituality of preparing for a new cycle this is also about awakenings this could be about awakenings spiritual growth dreams solitude this is also the house of healing and hidden gifts talents and abilities some other things that might bubble up to the surface because you're getting double energy here in psychological houses if anything bubbles up to the surface it is doing so for a reason to be healed, acknowledged and let go of your 12th house is extra emphasis on letting something go in order to welcome in something new. Where is your time, your money, your energy, your efforts being poured into? Like, where is all that going? Is it time to cut, sever away or change some of that? So maybe the focus comes back on you, Sag. So I'm just, again, giving you some examples also a really good time to connect with a healer, a therapist or a counselor, whatever resonates with you on how to move this energy out of your body and express yourself. I would just recommend to be gentle about it um, because we can also hurt ourselves physically if we push too hard from a physical exercise standpoint. Um, I mean, it, it depends on where your Mars is in your chart, but I mean, just take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy, Sad. You're a fire sign, so I have a feeling you're going to want to like go, go, go pretty hard. But yeah, give yourself grace and take it easy. You don't need to do anything crazy intense to express this energy. I mean, I want you to get it out of your body. I don't want you to hold it in, but you can do, do it in a gen gentle way, Sag. Okay, what else here? Fifth house matters might come up as well. So this is about your kids. Um, if you have any kids, this is also about, okay, I'm going to throw it out. I heard pets. So I'm going to throw that out there too. This could be about your pets. Um, this is about creative hobbies and projects, picking up something from the past that you dropped, picking back up on that now. Um, anything that lights you up. This is the house that lights you up from the inside out, Sag. This is also about romance and dating as well. That could be up for some changes, some challenges, some introspection 
things like that. Nothing to be scared of. It is what it is. That's what Mars does. He challenges us to move. He challenges us to make those changes in our lives. So we create the life that we desire and want. All right, Sag, enjoy the Mars retrograde and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey, Capricorn, let's talk about this Mars retrograde and what areas of life are being impacted for you. So the retrograde is happening in your eighth house and seventh house. And we're also going to talk about your 11th house and fourth house as well. So Capricorn, the majority of this retrograde is going to happen in your seventh house of partnerships, all walks of life, love, business, friends, family, you name it contracts agreements negotiations and marriage is up for some review or change and i'm going to throw it out there wherever mars goes he cuts and severs capricorn so again you could be cutting ending severing a relationship with someone or something again contracts agreements negotiations it could be with an employer it could be with a love relationship now is that for all of you no i'm just throwing out some examples so please don't panic um if you're in a solid relationship don't worry about it it just means there's some extra attention and focus that's going to be put on your relationships during this time capricorn now mars will also be activating your eighth house of leo so this is all about finances and resources and material possessions more so about shared assets and material possessions so for example anything that you have a mortgage on uh, a loan on this is about taxes and debts as well any sort of debts but this is more so about shared assets shared property shared mortgages shared debt um, this might be about your partner's income changing maybe not so much yours but maybe your partner's income is going to go through a transition and that will ultimately impact you now if you're retired again how do you get money from other sources is it the government is it through disability is it through a pension plan that could be up for some changes and reviews at this time capricorn now mars also might bring up things to do with friendship circles because he rules your 11th house of scorpio so friendship circles people that you surround yourself with by choice could be coming up for some changes some challenges some introspection this is also about your long-term commitments and goals this could also be about an older sibling if you have older siblings they could be going through some challenges or upheavals or changes in their lives for example so maybe you need to reach out and give them a little bit more love support care whatever the case may be capricorn um mars also rules your fourth house so we really talked about that in depth at the beginning of the video if you didn't watch that i recommend you watch that because i talked all about the fourth house so for you this probably will also impact your home life um family i also heard friends we already talked about that <laughs> your children anyone that you live with capricorn your place of living your home the structures of your home renovations in the home um roots ancestry going back to places that you call home or where you're born or things like that that could also be coming up at this time as well mom dad authority figures in your life could also be going through some changes or some challenges i'm just going to throw it out there it's mars after all i can't i'm sorry capricorn i can't sugarcoat this and this isn't for everyone uh this is only if this resonates with you some of the stuff i'm talking about if you're a parent this could again be changes or challenges coming in as you as a parent or your parenting style in some way shape or form regardless there, this could bring in tension in the home tension in your relationships so just keep that in mind capricorn everything is happening for a reason things are bubbling up to the surface for a reason for them to be acknowledged for them to be dealt with and again if you have to cut sever end anything that is not working in any of those areas of life that we talked about don't be afraid to do it you don't have to do it today you don't have to do it tomorrow but may june of 2025 you have lots of time to incorporate these changes um that's when i feel like you'll be able to see things a little bit more clearly and you'll be able to take action based on 
um, whatever these changes or challenges are that have come up for you. So Capricorn, enjoy the Mars retrograde season. I will see you back here in the next video. Bye for now. Hey Aquarius, let's talk about this Mars retrograde and what areas of life may be impacted for you. So Aquarius, uh, this retrograde starts in your seventh house of relationships of Leo. So this is all about relationships, all walks of life. So this could be love, this could be business, this could be friendship circles, this could be, well, not friendship circles, but I mean how you relate to your friends or your friendship circles. And this could even be about family members or um, relatives, extended family members that you relate to one-on-one. This is also the house of contracts, agreements, negotiations. Now, Aquarius, this is Mars. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. This could be about ending, severing, cutting away something or someone or a contract or an agreement that is not working for you anymore. Now, this is not a light switch. This energy is going to carry us right through to May of 2025. And again, Mars is going to be backing into your sixth house. But Aquarius, this could be about cutting away a relationship that just doesn't suit your life anymore. Whether this is with an employer, whether this is if you're a business owner, this could be an employee. Uh, and again, I'm going to throw it out there. If you're in a relationship, Aquarius, this could impact your love relationship as well. Now, if you're saying to yourself, there's no way I'm in a perfect relationship. Well, that's great, Aquarius. This, this is not, there's no way this is going to impact each and every one of you. I'm just going to give you some examples that hopefully you can resonate with. So I'm more so talking to those people that this isn't a surprise to them where, you know, they don't like their job or they don't like their employer, or they want to get out of the workplace, or they want to change jobs, they want to get out of their contract, they want to get out of their lease, um, or their rental agreement, or the, again, or a marriage. This Mars energy is going to help you sever those ties and move forward in a new, new beginnings, like in a new, um, new ventures, new adventures, so to speak, Aquarius. So I'm just going to throw it out there. But again, these are just examples. Mars is then going to back into your sixth house of cancer. So again, you have so many signatures here, Aquarius, of work. So you're going to hear me repeat myself. Yes, the sixth house of work could be impacted. Your work environment. So maybe you don't leave a job, but other coworkers around you are leaving their jobs. Or there's changes in the workplace or atmosphere or culture in some way, shape or form. The sixth house is also about your health, Aquarius. So how are you taking care of the body? Um, you may need to cut, sever away foods that own, that no longer uh, fit your lifestyle or that are irritating you in some way, shape or form. Because again, Mars will irritate and inflame the body to kind of get our attention sometimes. So again, cut, sever, ending from a dietary restriction perspective. Um, this could also be about how you take care of your vessel, your body. This could also be about pets and the health of your pets as well. So this could be the health of you and your pets, Aquarius. So don't ignore your pets or maybe get them in to get that extra checkup or just pay extra attention to them during this Mars retrograde. Just keep your eye on them. Okay. Uh, also this could be changes in your routines, like just day to day stuff you know, running the kids here, running the kids there, going here, going there, that could all be up for some change and introspection as well over the next several months. Now, Mars also rules your third house, your 10th house. So again, 10th house of career. I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Changes in work because uh, 10th houses are career houses. Maybe some of you are ready to retire and you're like, you know what? By May or June of 2025, you're going to be putting in that retirement or maybe before then. This could also be about your status. So we talked about the relationship thing. Um, status could be about, say you're known as being a lawyer and you decide to be a banker. Or status could also be you're known for being married to this person for 10 years. Now you're going to be divorced. You know, now you're going to be single again and on the market and available uh, and vice versa. Maybe you've been single and then now you're in a committed relationship or maybe you get engaged 
that you know so status can go so many different ways aquarius so that is your a very public house so it's what you're known for so even if you're retired are you a dog walker do you paint houses do you uh clean homes do you like what do you do how do you contribute do you do you take care of the grandkids or whatever the case may be what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis that you're known for maybe you're known for going to a coffee shop maybe it's time to switch it up and get a new uh maybe meet some new people for example especially if you're open to meeting someone new that could definitely be a possibility with mars popping into your um seventh house definitely now mars also rules your third house this is about the mind communication education technology transportation how you get around this is about short distance trips and traveling this is neighbors neighborhood siblings cousins community extended family members so this is again a very busy house similar to the sixth house so all those things i rattled off could also be coming up for some introspection or changes or challenges or again Aquarius this retrograde is all about cutting ending severing something in our lives letting go of something so we can welcome in or walk into something new this for you Aquarius um because Mars rules your third house this might have a vibe I'm going to throw it out there it might have a vibe of a Mercury retrograde because the third house is ruled by Mercury yes you have Aries there so it's ruled by Mars so it might almost have the similar feeling of a Mercury retrograde so I'm going to throw it out there for those of you buying new tech gadgets or new vehicles because Mars rules metal um buy that extra warranty I'm not saying don't do it but just take those extra precautions hang on to the receipts maybe buy extra warranty during this retrograde um or try to buy the vehicle before the Mars retrograde or after the Mars retrograde but again you don't have to stop your life if you need a vehicle if you need a way to get around if you need a new laptop do it just hang on to those receipts Aquarius so I'm just going to throw that out there as some more examples otherwise Aquarius enjoy the Mars retrograde and we'll see you back here in the next video bye for now hey Pisces let's talk about where this Mars retrograde may be activating you in multiple areas of life so Mars will be retrograding through your sixth house your fifth house but he also might activate your second house and your ninth house as well Pisces so let's start with that sixth house this is where Mars will be starting his retrograde this is all about work whatever you do on a day-to-day -day level from a work perspective if you are a business owner or you work for an employer there regardless there could be some changes or some challenges on the work front and again Pisces anything that comes up during this time is meant to come up for you to address for you to reassess and again wherever Mars goes he cuts ends and severs so it might be time Pisces to end a job or again if you're a business owner maybe make changes to your staff that work for you for example sixth house is also about your health and well-being Pisces so how are you taking care of yourself is there anything in your diet that you need to cut and sever is there any um habit that you need to kick again Mars is going to help you do that there could be changes with your day-to-day -day habits and routines in general so say you go religiously ABC uh, but maybe it's time to switch up that routine and do something a little bit different or something's going to come in to change up and switch up that routine because that's what Mars does is he um, invigorates us to make some changes and sometimes brings in challenges for us to overcome and go around and figure out how to move through those challenges now speaking of your health Pisces I want you to also pay attention to your pets if you have any pets this is also the house that rules them so pay extra attention to your pets give them some extra TLC also um, if they have any health issues that come up again I wouldn't be surprised if health issues do come up with your pets but just get them looked at I'm not dooming and glooming this that's life we get sick pets get sick it is what it is you know that's what we're here to experience the good the bad the ugly and the beautiful um so just pay you know again just Mars is highlighting 
putting extra attention and emphasis on this area of life is what I'm trying to get at. Now, Mars in the fifth house for you in Cancer is actually really nice. And this is where the bulk of this retrograde is going to be for you, Pisces. So you and Scorpio are actually very fortunate with this Mars retrograde because it is pouring nice harmonious energy into your sign. I'm not saying this is going to be a cakewalk though, because at the end of the day, this is Mars and I can't sugarcoat Mars. Mars cuts and severs wherever he goes. He inflames, he irritates, he makes us angry. That's just, that's just how it is. But without Mars, we'd all be couch potatoes. We would be all armchair astronauts. We would have no motivation, passion, drive to go after what it is that we want. So Pisces for you, this could be about romance, dating, sexuality. By the way, if your sex drive has gone down, don't let that bother you or scare you unless you want to take it up with a physician. You, you do you. But um, Mars for all of us retrograde will decrease our sex drive automatically because that's what that's what happens when you know Mars and Venus go retrograde you know that's just the way it is especially Mars because Mars rules our sex drive so the romance sector again maybe going through some reassessment or some revisions uh, this is also about your kids as well this is also about so changes and challenges that are happening in their lives as well and then you'll be there to support them this is also about hobbies projects whether this is for work or a passion project or a side hustle or if you're retired pick up things that you've dropped over the years or whatever the case may be or since the last retrograde cycle two years ago pick something back up and make it new again mars retrograde is so beneficial of picking up something new and making it old not so much about buying new things it's about making old things look new again if that makes sense so again i love this for you i love this retrograde in your fifth house um like i said you out of you and scorpio are the only two signs that are really getting this in a harmonious flow and i think you can get be really productive pisces over the next several months as well now romantic partners again could come and go as i mentioned at the beginning of the video if you end a relationship during this time, I don't know if it'll stick. They might come back around. Definitely relationships could be coming back around, whether you're single or not. Definitely loves old flames could be coming back around at this time. And it's up to you if you want to engage with that or not or shut them down. Depends on your relationship status, right? Depends on if you're in a relationship or not. Or maybe some of you are in an open relationship. And so it doesn't matter. You could welcome in a third individual into the relationship. So I'll leave that up to you, Pisces, but regardless, this is really nice energy coming into your fifth house and it's going back and forth, back and forth. So anything you have in Pisces, 17 to 29 degrees is gonna be lit up by this Mars energy, which I love for you. Uh, what else do we got here? Okay, so Mars rules your ninth house as well. So this is all about religion, spirituality, this is stepping outside of your comfort zone. This is the house of the gods. This is the house of legal matters, of law, of anything to do with international lands, foreign lands, foreign cultures, dealing with people all over the world, Pisces. So something along those lines and long distance traveling. Did I mention that? Education, teaching, mentoring, coaching, any of those walks of life or areas of life could be coming up at this time or again opportunities could be coming in because again mars is making a trine to your energy so opportunities could be coming back around from the past from your ninth house could be from the fifth house as well um also pisces i'm hearing this clearly reassessing your gambling habits the fifth house is also about gambling um and pleasure and having a good time <laughs> so pisces it might be time to rein it in um you know pick your poison whatever your poison is um but fifth house it's more so about gambling whatever that means for you so it might be time to kind of reassess that or relook at where your money is being spent even how much money are you spending on your kids too that that might also be coming up for some review or they might actually ask for money during this transit as well, Pisces. 
Okay, so we talked about the ninth house. Now the second house, again, the money house for you. Mars is a money planet. So uh, Pisces, I no doubt you know how to burn through money. <laughs> you know how to spend money. So like I said, that might be coming up for some reassessments or reviews. This is also a work house. The second house is also a work house. So I see two signatures here of possibilities of changing whatever it is you do on a nine to five level or if you're retired, how do you earn a living? How does money come to you? You know, how do you buy groceries or put food on the table or clothing on your back or gas money? Like, like who pays you? How does money flow to you? That could be up for some introspection and change um, and some challenges as well. Cause like I, like I said, I can see for those of you with kids, they could be asking you for money at this time. Uh, especially those kids that are at a distance. I can definitely see that as well. Even grandkids, that could be a possibility as well. Um, even a love relationship could be asking you for money as well. So I'll, I'll let you, you know, I'm not going to harp on you. I'm just giving you some examples of possibilities that could be coming up. Second house is also about uh, your skills, your talents, your abilities, um, your material possessions. So again, Mars wants to cut and sever. So Pisces, maybe it's time to let go of some material possessions so you can um, make space for something new in your life. Skills, talents, abilities, you might get fired up to, again, change careers, change your line of work um, or upgrade. So maybe you can apply for a, a promotion or something along those lines, Pisces. But otherwise, enjoy the Mars retrograde and we'll see you back here in the next video. Bye for now.